Hey guys, my name is Scobie. Today I'm going to be showing you the best export settings for Adobe Premiere Pro to YouTube. This is going to be a nice, quick, and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you each setting step by step. So the first thing you want to do is open up whatever project you're wishing to export. And you want to either select the actual preview or the actual timeline. And we're going to go to File, Export, and then Media. From here, we're going to be selecting the format H.264 and then we can select whatever preset you wish. What I would recommend is clicking the Y button on your keyboard and on the right hand side, you can, you can scroll down with the actual arrow keys and I would select whatever format you recorded in. So if you recorded in 720p, I'd recommend choosing YouTube 720p HD. If you recorded in 1080, choose YouTube 1080p HD. In this case, I would recommend choosing 1080p if you actually recorded in 1080 and that's what I'm gonna be using for this video. Click that open and we're gonna be brought with some presets down below. We are gonna be editing through some of them, but that's our best starting point so you can start in a similar point we have our output name and if we double click on this we can change the output name to whatever you want and you can also select your file save path in this case i'm just going to leave it here because this is where i am previously i'm going to click save and you can select anywhere you want to export your file to underneath here you make sure your export audio and export video is checked so both of those go out in case you export without sound this might be one of the reasons why so here we're going to come down here to all of our little tabs we have effects video audio multiplexer captions and publish so in this case we're going to be paying particular attention to video and audio and the rest of them we don't really need to pay much attention to so we're going to be going through our video settings first and the first thing we're going to see is the width and height and this is going to be what we set previously so this is actually 1080p if you want to change it here you can also change it to 720p very easily and it will automatically update but for this instance like i said i'm going to be working on 1080 so as you can see, some of my settings are grayed out and I can't actually edit them. If you click the tick to the right hand side, you can uncheck this, which will make them actually accessible and we can edit around with them then. So the first thing I'm going to be looking at is the frame rate. And in this case, I have it set to 60 frames because that's what I recorded my footage at. But you should let this frame rate match whatever you recorded at. So if you can change your frame rate to 60 frames, it's because you need to come down here to profile, set your profile to high, set your level to 4.2. And then you should be able to unlock your frame rate to 60 frames. If you don't have it set like this, you will not be able to set it to 60 frames, but it's a really easy fix. Down here below, we have our aspect, and I would leave this on square pixels 1.0. Anything else, if we check it, you'll see there's some black bars and it'll give some other weird errors. So just keep it on square pixels 1.0 and everything should look nice and clean. And finally, down below these things, we have render at maximum depth. And this is good if you want to squeeze that extra bit of quality out of a video, especially if you record at a higher resolution and want to scale down. Say if you record it at 4K, I want to scale down to 1080p, for example. This can add a lot of time to your render time. So just bear that in mind. I usually check this if I have some time. My videos are usually shorter in the tutorials. So there's not a lot of graphics and flashes and like not a lot of fast moving stuff going on. But if you're rendering a 15, 20 minute gameplay video, this can add its toll to your actual render time so use this sparingly i would recommend it if you can if you have the hardware so for this instance i'm going to check it on but if you find it adds too much time to your render time you can click off some of these little settings to add some uh, time back into your pocket so down below this we have our bitrate settings and the first thing we have is the bitrate encoding. If we click into this, we have three options. We have CBR, we have VBR one pass and VBR two pass. So basically you pretty much never use CBR. VBR one pass is where Adobe Premiere Pro basically looks at your entire track and renders it straight away without doing any analysis or anything over the track. VBR two pass is where Adobe Premiere Pro on its first pass analyzes the entire track. And then on the second pass of the VBR, it actually starts to render and encode your video. So VBR 2 pass can help with the quality a little bit, but does significantly add time to your render time. So just bear that in mind. I will check that on in this case because I'm trying to show you the best settings. So if you're trying to get a quick render off, you can take off render at maximum depth and you can also change it to VBR 1 pass. This can also depend on your hardware, but usually I try to get as much quality out of the video as possible. So these kind of things can just help your video look a little bit better. So underneath our bitrate encoding, you can see we have our target and maximum bitrate. And by default with the YouTube preset, we have these both set to 16. And this is usually what I keep my settings at. What you wanna do is you wanna keep your maximum bitrate at 16. Anything higher than 16 is gonna be completely unnoticeable on YouTube. YouTube does a lot of compression on videos once they're uploaded. So anything after 16 megabytes is gonna be completely useless. What you wanna do is set your target bitrate from 14 to 16. So you can set it to 14 target and 16 maximum. But usually I like to leave it on 16, 16 to get the maximum amount of quality out of my videos as I can. 
Anything more than 16 is going to be useless. Anything less than 16, you start to see a little bit of quality drop off. But 16 is that sweet spot. Just bear in mind, if you used to keep it lower, keeping it at 16 can increase file output size. So if your video is a bit longer, you might want to tear this down a bit so you can reach the 2 gig YouTube upload limit. But there's a little bit of trial and error to see what works for you. 16 is where you get the best quality though. Underneath here, we have the advanced settings. You don't really need to play around with this. In fact, I would leave it unticked if you can. And now we're going to jump over to the audio tab right above our video. You should leave your audio format on AAC and don't change it to anything else for the most part. You want to make sure that your sample rate is on 48,000 kilohertz. You can set your audio quality to high and you can set your bit rate for the actual audio from anything above 160. Anything below 160, your audio gets too mushy. Anything above 160 is kind of where you see a little bit less of a notice. Like I said, I like to crank as much quality out of my videos as I can. So 320 bit rate is like the perfect actual like medium point for me personally. You can leave your advanced settings to bit rate and we're pretty much done with our audio and video settings. So if we come down here, finally, we're on our kind of like last little bit of settings. So the only one we need to bring our attention to here is the use maximum render quality. And this is pretty similar to the render at maximum depth. It kind of squeezes that little bit of extra quality out of your video, but can increase an impact on render times. So I would recommend checking this if you can and you have some time for your renders. It can just help squeeze that little bit of extra quality out of your video. And all these steps together are going to make your videos look just as good and as crisp and clear as some of the bigger YouTubers like a lot of people people try to get to and achieve to so you should use all these if you can if you have the time and you really should leave some time for your actual renders to get through and get done so once all this is done simply click export and your video will start to export it just helps your videos stand out a little bit more and any bit of extra crisp clear quality you can get out of your videos is just a great asset i'm gonna leave my paypal link down below if you found this video helpful and you want to actually donate to me that would be a huge benefit of course there's no need and there's no pressure on this like if you're new subscribe share it with your friends i'm gonna leave two videos on screen the one on the left is going to be my most recent upload and the one on the right is going to be one that youtube most suggests that you will watch so you should probably check it out because it's apparently for you anyway guys thank you so much for watching until next time as always keep it saucy peace